What's going on guys? I'm Steve. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another video. If it's your first time stopping by the channel, hit the subscribe button. Trust me, you won't regret it. If you're a returning subscriber, as always, guys, welcome back and I do appreciate the support. Guys, listen, we got some news about the Tyree Nichols case uh, out there in Memphis. Shout out Memphis, you know what I'm saying? Can't forget that. And uh, we've covered just about everything that's out. I mean, we've seen the videos, the full unedited body cam footage, so on and so forth. Lawyers looking stupid with some of them. And uh, it's no way in heck they're going to get out of this. But uh, one thing we haven't seen or heard was any statements from witnesses. Well, in this news article I'm about to show you that just came out, I'm going to show you what one of the witnesses said and what's document documented about what they saw. Take a look at this. Today, new documents from the city of Memphis sheds new light in the investigation of Tyree Nichols' death. Thank you for joining us. I'm Pepper Baker. And I'm Rudy Williams. Nearly 3,000 pages of records revealing new witness accounts, past disciplinary actions of responding officers, and how first responders failed to act to save Nichols' life after he was beaten on camera. A judge ordered the release of these documents after a legal challenge by ABC24 and other media outlets. The records show Desmond Mills Jr. and Demetrius Haley, two of the officers criminally charged in beating Nichols to death, were both previously rep reprimanded by MPD for violence towards women during arrests, which they failed to report in their official police reports. Another one of the five officers facing charges is Emmett Martin III, who was suspended for three days in 2019 and another for one day in 2021. And then there's Lieutenant Dwayne Smith. He was assigned to the Scorpion unit and retired before the city of Memphis could fire him. In 1999, he was arrested and given a 15-day suspension for aggravated assault against his wife and stepchildren. Well, these new records provide further information about the inaction of the four MPD employees, or MFD employees rather, who were present on the scene on the night of Nichols' death. During an internal investigation, MFD private Jamichael Sandridge claimed he could not have done anything to prevent Nichols' death. He and fellow MFD private Robert Long were fired for neglecting their duty and providing false reports. Lieutenant Michelle Whitaker, the highest ranking fire personnel on site, didn't even leave the truck, stating she believed the two privates could handle the situation, but admitted she had never seen either of them treat a victim of pepper spray before. Then paramedic Jesse Guy was suspended for nine days because of misreading Nichols' heart rate, failing to bring the proper equipment to the scene, and neglecting to inquire about Nichols' condition. The documents also outline what a witness who lived nearby Nichols beating at Castlegate and Bear Creek saw and heard that night. In it, she, uh, the witness expressed frustration that no one acted when Tyree sat unconscious, saying, oh my God, they just raised his arm and it fell. It just bothered me that everybody was standing out in the street. Well, ex-officer Desmond Mills pleaded guilty to charges, including second-degree murder. The other four charged are scheduled to stand trials on the state charges in August and on federal charges in September. Well, with the release of the disciplinary records of the Memphis police officers charged in Tyree Nichols' death, the question comes, why were officers with checkered pass hired in the first place? And what can be done to make sure this doesn't happen again? Our Stephen Pimpo joins us in the studio now. Stephen, what do community leaders believe is the step forward? Rudy Pepper, back in 2022, the Memphis Police Department changed their hiring standards in an effort to boost recruitment. Now, that included reducing the education and required work experience and introduced the option to seek waivers to hire applicants with criminal records. Those I, those I spoke with today say it's time to focus on quality officers not quantity. Trying to increase the number of police officers, I would argue almost by any means necessary, and to stop and fight violent crime almost by any means necessary. That's what Memphis pastor and activist Dr. Earl Fisher believes has led to the situation within the Memphis Police Department that ultimately contributed to the death of Tyree Nichols. Dr. Fisher argues there needs to be a reevaluation of how MPD selects candidates. According to documents released today, 
multiple former MPD officers connected to Nichols' arrest, like Demetrius Haley and now retired Lieutenant Dwayne Smith, had multiple accusations of violent confrontations. And quite possibly could have recruited them to kind of exercise some of that brute and illegal force and excessive force that we have seen. Last year, former Memphis Police Director Tony Armstrong said one problem is the lack of quality veteran officers. You cannot turn five, six, two, three-year officers loose in the street and expect positive results. Dr. Fisher says it is past time for a plan forward. I think the community is entitled to at this point is a comprehensive plan that the public needs to see. And I think we've been waiting far too long for that. I reached out to the Memphis Police Department today to ask what changes in policy have been made since Tyree Nichols' death or what are plans going forward. They said they could not comment on ongoing litigation, even though our question was about policy. As that's the story, and uh, it's not really anything we haven't covered on this channel before about the Tyree Nichols case, but I'm going to talk about three things. First thing is this. They showed the officers in the beginning and they were saying, hey, you know, two of them had offenses against women, right? I don't think that has anything to do with that. I think they just put that in there to further smear their character. You know what I'm saying? And that plays no part into this role, but I mean, I just said what I said about that. But uh, the paramedics, the, su the supervisor that was with them, that lady, she said, hey, they was never trained on dealing with pepper spray and they were still first year rookies and she was a supervisor. She never got out the car. She, like Dwayne Smith, and I'm going to get on him in a second, need uh, charges pressed against them and they need some type of uh, action taken against them. Why? They're still trainees. You went out there, they said the one dude, the black dude, he said it was nothing they can do to save him. You know what I'm saying? I guess that's after they got him in the thing and like really looked at, assessed his injuries and stuff. It was nothing they could do. That tells you something right there. And that's on record. He was beaten so bad, he was on his way out of there. I never wanted to say this, but honestly, certain times on the ground, you know, and no disrespect to his family, anything near the end. If you paid attention, he looked like he was gone already. For real, it looked like he was gone already. I'm going to tell you another thing. She's sitting in the car playing Candy Crush. Nah, she, she wasn't playing. She was on the phone, no. She on the phone while they out there working. You seen all them police. You know it was a serious situation for y'all to be called out there. I'm sure they said something to you. You couldn't get your ass out that car and go look. You know they wasn't uh, trained on pepper spray. You heard that through the call. Why your ass still in the truck? That's why she need to get smoked too. Now, Dwayne Smith didn't act like a supervisor. What more else can I say? Sat around, was looking. What the witness say, y'all? They lift his arm up and he just fell. I was surprised how people were just standing around in the street looking at him. And that's one of the big questions we all ask. Why? Why was he sitting out there like that? And y'all just letting his life slip away. And y'all just talking about the horror story of fighting a man the size of a damn string bean. Third thing, and I'm going to get out of here. This court case, they're going to get smoked on two things. Common sense and laziness. Didn't render aid. Worried about how tired they was. How they had maced uh, mace themselves like Kingstone cops looking stupid. And how Dwayne Smith never took uh, initiative and just took their word for it, even though a man looked like he'd been beat up by Mike Tyson on the ground. Never asked questions. Just rolled with the bunches, down with the Scorpion team, riding off into the sunset, playing uh, Hezekiah Walker. Sinful. Lack of common sense. Didn't act like police officers. All the training they ever had went out the window. But they say in that second part of that thing, lack of quality officers. When you wear that badge, that should mean something to you because you put your life on the line. And a lot of people may not act like they like you, but they need you. So that should have some type of pride in you to do the right thing. Or at least in chaotic situations, at least one of you five idiots, six, including uh, Preston Hemfield, have enough reserve to remember what you're out there for and why you do what you do and save that man's life from that uh, brutal onslaught. But you didn't do it. 
Anything you get is fair game with me. I'm Stock Market Steve for the Dynamic Reason Channel. As always, like, comment, share, and subscribe. Justice for Tyree Nichols. You heard me? I'm out.